The views and opinions of the guests on The Wileener Show are those of the guests and are not necessarily the views and opinions of the hostess Wileener and or her co-host. a brand new year and i want y'all to know that i also had a birthday while i was gone too december 28th yes i did i celebrated my birthday while i was gone and uh i know a bunch of y'all would have celebrated with me if i'd have hung out but anyway i didn't and so it is what it is okay but i love all of y'all and i just want to give a few shout outs right here i want to welcome everybody that is that has come back on the Wiley and the Show to listen and tune in on KKVV 1060 AM Las Vegas on your radio dial. I want to welcome all of you. And I want to welcome my viewers who are watching out there on WileyNaTVShow.com and all of those who are watching out there on KKVV.com. Hello, everybody. I'm excited that you are back with me again today. And I want to give my shout-outs to KKVV. Y'all know how I do what I do. I always have to say hello to KKVV. Those are my people, wonderful folks over here at the radio station. I want to say hello to my children and my husband. And I want to give a special extra a special shout out today to my sister-in-law Jenny who is Jenny Bennett who is in town from Charlotte North Carolina just visiting with us and we had a wonderful time earlier today so I want y'all to know that it is going to be a show today we're talking about the way to start the new year health no health no religion we're going to take a break and when we come back the rubber is going to meet the road see you in a minute sugar. You know how bad it is. You've read all about it. It's linked to everything from weight gain to chronic inflammation to being the best petri dish for all bacteria and viruses to grow. It feeds all the bad stuff so they get stronger and destroys all the good things making you weak and defenseless. You need to control it or you'll be facing one or more of the health concerns it breeds. Although we all should be watching our consumption, there are some of us that are particularly sensitive to the effects of sugar. After eating any type of meal, do remember, the body breaks down everything from that healthy broccoli to the not so healthy but tasty donut into sugar called glucose. However, some of us have a very efficient way of getting rid of this sugar while others don't. And as I said before, when sugar hangs around longer than it should, it causes the destruction of tissues and organs and cells which then becomes a major health issue. The Healthy Body Blood Sugar Pack is specifically designed for those individuals who need further support to buffer these sugar levels in their body after mealtimes and keeps them from spiking and crashing all the time and also helps to support those systems and organs that help the self-regulation of these sugar levels. The Blood Sugar Pack is grounded in the three products in our Healthy Body Pack, so all those are in there but then it further specializes by adding Sweeties, a proprietary blend of natural nutrients that support the moving of sugar or glucose into cells so they can be burned for energy. They also help to support healthy insulin levels and support the buffering of sugar levels after meals. The blood sugar pack gives you the controls you need to support healthy blood sugar management. So I 
I am back, and you know what? Did I tell y'all who I am? <laughs> I tell you what, y'all know who I am. I'm Wileena, the Las Vegas queen of gospel. And y'all know what show this is. This is the Wileena show, and this is where the rubber meets the road. And I'm excited about the rubber meeting the road right here for a brand new year. Yes, indeed, we have made it to 2014. And if I tell you I have a brand new year and brand new faces, and if y'all watching out there on WileyTheTVShow.com, you see that we have some brand new faces. I have the females in the house. Y'all know I like it sometimes. I like to get with the women sometimes. Because you know how it is with us females getting together. We got things to talk about. And I'm excited about what we're going to be talking about. But you know what? What better way to start the year out, a brand new year, than to talk about health? Okay, and that's what we're going to do today. Y'all know why I the show subject to just let the rubber meet the road just any old kind of way. Y'all know how I do what I do. <laughs> I just love it. I love it. I love it. And so I'm going to love talking to y'all about health today and next week. And you never know. We might just talk about health for the whole month of January. You just never know about why Lena. Y'all can't put nothing past me, Okay. If you don't know it, you better ask somebody. That's all I got to tell you. So I have my wonderful guests with me again uh, right here today. And they are brand new to the Wileena Show. Both of these beautiful ladies. And so I'm going to take the time out to introduce them uh, to you. And I'm going to start by introducing uh, Miss Mandy Wilder. Miss Mandy Wilder is a member of the Three Angels SDA Church. She attended Western Washington University and received a bachelor's degree in science, exercise science, and sports physiology, and a bachelor's of arts degree in K-12 physical education and health. She has been blessed with a wonderful husband and two beautiful children. She also does the health note weekly for the Three Angels Church. And I am welcoming and excited to have on my show today with me, Miss Mandy Wilder. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm just happy to have you. And and uh, uh, pull that mic over there closer to you a little bit there so we can make sure, because I want to make sure all of my folks here every word you got to say girl okay, okay. <laughs> i want to welcome you to the wild the show and i understand that you have quite a bit of uh, health background and so that's what we're going to be talking about for the next two weeks how's that sound to you all right so i tell you what uh why don't you say hello to my listening and viewing the audience out there and if you got a couple things you want to say go right ahead and give them a shout out right. and put that mic a little closer okay, okay go ahead just want to say hello to everyone and just hope everyone's having a blessed day. Health is the key, the key to everything. And uh, open mind and keeping your, yourself in a positive mental and absorbing the word of God. So we're going to talk about that today. Whoa. Woo. Hello. <laughs> I guess you all heard that. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, well, Mandy, I have another guest here, and I'm going to take just a moment to introduce her as well, okay? All right, Chris Barker. Chris Barker was born and raised in California and has lived in Las Vegas for about seven years. She has been married to her husband, Jim, for 32 years. Last October, ooh, girl, have mercy. Anyway, <laughs> they have two grown children and four grandchildren. She is currently a member of Le Hashem Messianic Synagogue in Las Vegas. She has worked from home as a medical transcriptionist since 2005. She considers her Herself to be a perpetual student, always taking classes and learning new things. Some of her more recent studies include recovery from substance abuse and codependency and biblical Hebrew. Part of her recovery experience has been to learn about food and nutrition and to try to incorporate what she has learned. Her Hebrew studies reveal God's precepts for nutrition for the blessings of good health. Wow. She believes recovery, the biblical term for sanctification, is a process, one that includes all parts of a person's body, soul, spirit, 
and it can be difficult to unlearn ingrained poor health habits and learn new better ways of living well i tell you what miss chris barker welcome to the walena show how are you doing i'm fine thanks for having me walena oh it's a wonderful pleasure of my own just to have you right here and i just want to say uh if you would like to go ahead and give a shout out or say something special to somebody out there that you think is listening uh joining in with us today go right ahead and just take that mic girl well, I just want to say shalom, welcome to everybody who's watching out there. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, what I know, but I'm also here to learn, just as you are. Hmm. And I hope we can all gain some perspective from the Word of God about how to treat our bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Boy, I tell you, the women are the bomb. <laughs> And you know what? Some people might say, well, why did she choose women? Well, I'm going to tell you. I chose women because women tend to be a little bit more health conscious than our men do. You know, that's just kind of what I feel. Am I right, ladies? Amen. You know? <laughs> I know y'all got husbands and you got to go home and face them. What do I do, too? Mine is closed by, believe me, but he know how I am, you know. I'm the one that's always fussing at him saying, no, don't you eat that. You better eat this, you know. So I think it's a good thing that we are going to be talking about health uh, here today. The topic, uh, the title of this show, although y'all know it's the Wileena Show with a rubber beast the road, we're still adding a little bit to it, and it's called No Health, No Religion. No health, no religion. And I say that because somehow, deep down inside, I just kind of feel like, you know, if you got really, really bad health, then uh, that may affect uh, your walk, your walk in whatever your faith is. Uh, am I correct, ladies? Do y'all agree with me on that kind of? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mandy, I want to get you to pull that mic Absolutely. over over here by sure. you because I just I, I'm a little worried that people are not going to hear you too clearly. Okay. So there we go. And all right. Okay. So what I want to say, uh, first of all, let me let my callers know. Callers, I know you're out there. Okay. And I love all of y'all. And I want y'all to call in whenever you get ready. But let us get a little dialogue going here for a minute first. And let's see what we're going to be talking about. And then, you know, once we get the conversation going, y'all want to call in and ask my guests some questions. Because I have some professional ladies sitting up in here. So, you know, they know a few things. But then, like Chris says, you know, she's here to share and learn. And I'm sure Mandy feels the same way. And, of course, y'all know how I am. I'm learning every time I do the Wild Eating Show. I <laughs> I know some people probably say that while in she just know everything. No, I don't. I really don't. I learn from everybody. Now, I'll tell you what I do. I siphon that information. I'm like a sponge. I'm here to suck it up. You know, I get these brains on the Wiley in the show, and I start sucking up what they know, you know. And I just try to consume as much knowledge as I can from the leaders in the, of the world that tend to know a little bit more than me, you know. So I enjoy learning from others. Uh, so, but anyway, callers, I would like to remind you that you can call in, and it, the uh, phone number for my local call is 702-650-5588. That's 702-650-5588. And if you're calling from any other city, state, country, whatever, 1-800-366-8883. That's 1-800-366-8883. Be respectable to my guests. Now, I know you may or may not agree with everything they say. I might not either, but it's okay. You know, we have the right to agree to disagree on the Wild End Show. We're not here to say everything that one person says is right or everything they say is wrong. But we do have the right to our own opinion, our own philosophy. And so the Wiley and Show is just here to bring that information out for you. If you want to email me, please email me at wilelinatvshow at aol.com. That's wilelinatvshow at aol.com. That would be great if you send me an email. Now, we're going to do two parts for sure. And then we'll see how it all goes. But we're definitely going to do two parts. So uh, if you think of something this week and you want to ask, uh, even send me an email to ask a rubber meet the road question or something, you know, for next week, be my guest. Do that. It, it'll be okay. And uh, these ladies are going to be coming back. Uh, you will be back with me again next week. Right, ladies? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm putting y'all out on blast. Mm -hmm. You know, you're on the air. Okay? So when you say yes, everybody heard you. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. So these ladies will be back with me again next week for part two. And uh, but for today, we're gonna we're gonna get started with our dialogue. Now, what I have here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, whoever's tuning in, is I have two different denominations. And you know that's how the Wildlander Show really works. You know, we usually have two different beliefs, two different denominations, and we talk about what's different and what they teach and what they believe. Now, these ladies are gonna share with us their knowledge on health. And both of these denominations that I have chosen. Uh, the two denominations have been on the Wild Inter show previously, uh, but not these particular guests. Uh, but the, the the denominations that I have chosen for today, uh, which is Seventh Day Adventist and Messianic Judaism, they both have health messages in their teaching, in their regular worship teaching. They teach their members uh, different things in regards to their health so these two denominations and i'm not saying that they're the only ones on the planet you know but of course these two are the two that i chose and they tend to uh let their people know that your health has a lot to do with your spiritual walk so we're going to be uh allowing them to share uh that information with us today now uh i want to i want to just read a little article and y'all know how I am. I always find something to share with you on the Wildlina show. And so I found something that I thought was rather interesting. And then uh, after I share this article with you, then I'm going to uh, we're going to get into dialogue with these ladies and and let them share some of the knowledge that they have. And just remember that we'll be back next week too. So if we don't cover everything today, it's okay. All right. So uh, this article that I have is called "Religious Spiritual Support Benefits Men and Women Facing." chronic illness and the study finds individuals who practice religion and spirituality report better physical and mental health than those who do not to better understand its relationship and how spirituality religion can be used for coping with significant health issues University of Missouri Researchers are examining what aspects of religion are most beneficial and for what populations. Now, MU Health uh, Psychology uh, researchers have found that religious and spiritual support improves health outcomes for both men and women who face chronic health conditions. Our findings reinforce the idea that religion, spirituality, may help buffer the negative consequences of chronic health conditions, said Stephanie Reed, Associate Professor of Health Psychology in the School of Health Professions. We know that there are many ways of coping with stressful life situations such as a chronic illness. Involvement in religious spiritual activities can be an effective coping strategy. Religious and spiritual support in includes care from congregations, spiritual interventions such as religious counseling and forgiveness practices, forgiveness practices and assistance from pastors and hospital chaplains. The recent publication from the MU Center for Religion on the Professions Research Group authored by Reed found that Religious support is associated with better mental health outcomes for women and with better physical and mental health for men. Both genders benefit from social support, the ability to seek help from and rely on others provided by fellow congregants and involvement in religious organizations, said co-author Brick Johnstone, health uh, psychology professor encouragement to seek out religious and spiritual supports can assist individuals in coping with stress and physical symptoms related to health issues health care providers can urge patients to take advantage of these resources which provide emotional care financial assistance and opportunities for increased socialization the study examined the role of gender in using spirituality, religiosity, to cope with chronic health conditions and disabilities, including spinal cord injury, brain injury, stroke, and cancer. Using measures 
using measures of religiousness, spirituality, general mental health, and general health perception, the researchers found no differences between men and women in terms of self reported levels of spiritual experiences, religious practices, or congregational support. This finding contrasts with other studies that suggest women may be more spiritual or participate in religion more frequently than men. While women generally are more religious or spiritual than men, we found that both genders may increase their reliance on spiritual and religious resources as they face increased illness or disability, John Stone said. For women, mental health is associated with daily spiritual experiences, forgiveness, and religious spiritual coping, the study found. This suggests that belief in a loving, supportive, and forgiving higher power is related with positive mental coping for women with chronic conditions. For men, religious support, the perception of help, support, and comfort from local congregations was associated with better self rated health. John Stone is director of the MU Spirituality and Health Research Program. He has completed research studies examining the relationships that exist among religion, spirituality, and health, particularly for individuals with different chronic disabling conditions and for those from different faith traditions. I thought that that was a very interesting uh, uh, article that um, sort of, you know, it, it really kind of sets the tone for what we're going to be discussing today, and that is religion and spirituality combined among men and women. Okay, and so ladies, I, I'd like to ask you first, first, the first question that I'd like to ask you, what are some of the reasons, uh, I'll start with um, uh, Chris, what are some of the reasons health is important to our spiritual walk? Well, they, from a messianic point of view. Well, I would say that the most obvious is the healthier you are, the more you can uh, further the kingdom of God. Um while there is an argument for if you're in the hospital, you can witness to the doctors and the nurses and the other people there, um, your best your best health is um, more useful in the kingdom. Um, and that would include all parts of your body, your mind, your body, and your spirit. Uh, and in the scriptures, God gives us the precepts precepts for uh, how to eat and what to eat, the things that he created for us to eat. And that's why you hear um, the Jewish people talking about eating kosher. Let me clarify, okay. I'm not Jewish. I just associate myself with them. Okay, okay. All right, that's, that's far enough right there. Just don't go too far on me, okay, because <laughs> we're going to get into that in just a okay. minute. Okay, uh, Mandy. Is that your name, girl? Yes. Mandy. Yes. All right, I think I got that right. Yes, you did. <laughs> Okay, Mandy, I think you're such a cutie pie. Uh, I want to ask you the same question, Mandy. How about it? What are some of the reasons health is important to your spiritual walk um, under your teaching and belief, the Seventh-day Adventist? Well, when we look at um, Ellen G. White and uh, some of the things she stated, uh, one of the things, the quotes that I like the, the best that she has written, is that our first duty toward God and our fellow beings is that of self-development. Every faculty with which the Creator has endowed us should be cultivated to the highest degree of perfection, that we may be able to do the greatest amount of good of which we're capable, hence that the time is spent to to good account, which is used in establishment and preservation of physical as well as mental health. So the healthier we are, the more we are able to connect with God, and the more we're able to give back to the community the way he wanted us to, to share the word, to share his love, his grace, his mercy. 
Okay. Okay, I like that. Okay, but let me uh, ask you this now. I, I, I picked up this book, and I just noticed that you you mentioned her name, and I picked up this book because I've heard uh, your denomination tend to talk uh, quite a bit about this lady, Ellen G. White. Mm -hmm. Now, she has a book here called, I, I have never read this book, and I do not know what's in it, really. Right. <laughs> and it's a pretty thick big book, book, but anyway... Uh, it says Ellen G. White counsels on diet and foods. Are you familiar with this book? I am uh, somewhat familiar with it. She has 130 books. So oh, really? really? This okay, so who is she exactly? She is a woman that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, has spoken to and has authored. Basically, she's the Christian pioneer for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, her and her husband. And she was given a vision in 1848 of the harmful effects of tobacco, um, coffee, and tea. In 1863, she was also given a vision of health, um, and it reinforced what God was telling her to basically guard your health with what we put in our body, because things were shifting um, in society as well as what the foods we were uh, consuming. She knew in the future things would probably not be as wholesome as they were in Little House on the Prairie days. Okay, so she's not a, uh, uh, she's uh, uh, deceased. Yes, she's definitely and, and, deceased. And how long ago has she been deceased? Oh, gosh, I want to say she lived past 80, so she's been deceased for probably a good, this 1848, we're looking at 1865, a good 100 years, yeah. Oh, really she's been deceased at least about 100 time. years. Yes. Oh, and your denominational belief uh, tend to lean toward her, her teachings or writings or whatever. Is that what you're telling us? What I love about Ellen G. White is everything that she um, wrote, I could, you can actually take, because I'm very science-based. I grew up that way. Um, okay. Everything was very logical to me growing up. I wanted to go to school. I knew I wanted what I wanted to do. I wanted to help health-wise. Um, I work in the health community now, but reading her books, which I had never read before, um, introduced to them just a few years ago. Um, amazing books when it comes to health. Okay. And everything that she stated in the books, what I loved about her, I could research and find it in the Word of God. So all of the works and the, the things that she really discusses, it's temperance, it's rest, it's getting sunshine. Okay. It's uh, moderation, you know, um, but there are things that she talks about, meat, caffeine, certain okay. things. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I want to ask you, uh, Chris, thank you. Absolutely. I want to ask you, Chris, uh, do under, under the uh, Messianic uh, Judaism belief, do they have somebody like this? That's a writer or, or somebody that they look up to uh, that offers them, you know, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, uh, uh, knowledge or future, you know, do, do they have anybody like Ellen G. Not, White or Not something? specifically that I know of. Okay. We have some modern-day teachers uh, okay. from, say, the Biblical Health Institute. There are some Jewish people in there. Um, there are some rabbinical teachings as well, but we mostly go by uh, Leviticus 11, which talks about the clean and unclean foods. Okay, okay. All right. So, now, uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, the book of Leviticus, uh, it, it, it appear, appear, apparently, it, uh, the rules in the book of Leviticus uh, 11, uh, uh, I'm going to ask uh, one of you ladies to kind of give me a little bit of a quote on that book. Uh, do, do either one of you ladies kind of know what that scripture says? Just a little bit, enough yeah. to, you know, just kind of give my, my listening and my view in the audience, uh, you know, some of it. I mean, I don't want, we, we're not having a Bible study here, right. but, you know, I just kind of want to, you said the, it, it's Leviticus 11, right? Right. And what exactly does Leviticus 11 talk about, uh, Chris? Well, it lists the foods that are considered cl clean and unclean, the foods that God created for us to eat, and the foods that were not created for us to eat. They were created for other purposes, like shellfish, because they go along the bottom and eat up the excrement of other things and, and pigs and things like that. Okay, so uh, so the book of Leviticus is what your denomination uh, lives by, basically. Well, that's, that's the foundation, because all the scriptures are built on the first five books. Uh, the first five books are 
specific, specifically from the mouth of God, and then the prophets talk about that, and then the New Testament builds on that. It's it's a cohesive unit. It's not their book and our book or anything like that. It's, we get all of our definitions in the New Testament from the Old Testament. So okay. when, when, like in Peter's vision, where it talks about the... I was going to go there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to go there because uh, I've heard that before. So let me just give me a minute here. Okay. okay. <laughs> See, that's what I tell y'all. When you get women in the room, boy, I tell you, you just, you just can't. I can't handle females. I just, I'm always had a problem handling women. But anyway, here I go. I'm going to try this again. Uh, Mandy. Yes, Mandy. <laughs> Mandy, can you talk to me about the book of Leviticus, please? Do you, do you, uh, are you under the Seventh-day Adventist, uh, if I'm correct, uh, your denominational belief also teaches the same type of uh, uh, teaching when it comes to the diet and all that. Uh, your foundation is the book of Leviticus as well, is that correct? Yes, I mean, we can oh. say absolutely. Okay, so so uh, Leviticus 11, right? From Lady? 11, 1 through 31. Thank okay, you. 11, 1 through 31, everybody, if you want to read that. Okay, and so basically that book, uh, now there's people out there that says, okay, now, hey, come on now, y'all. <laughs> y'all know where I'm going. Some people say you don't need to honor all that. First of all, there's people, you know, to see what we're talking about here today is health and religion combined, okay, and how the two affect each other, or do they belong together, or what, okay, so then you have the people that say, on a religious tip, from a religious standpoint, that you do not need to be concerned with what the book of Leviticus says, because for one, it's the Old Testament, it's under the old law of Moses. Now, y'all following me? Mm -hmm. You ladies following me? Okay. And then, of course, uh, such as what my my guest here, Chris, said uh, in uh, uh, Pete, uh, well, in the, in Acts, is it Acts? See, I'm not a Bible quote. I don't try to do that. But anyway, I know y'all would help me out. In the book of Acts, there's a scripture somewhere that says uh, there was a guy named Peter that had a vision. And he said, rise, Peter, slay, and eat. And people teach their congregations that you do not need to be concerned about what you eat. You just, you don't, you, you don't call it anything clean or unclean you can eat it as long as you pray over it it's okay and it's not gonna bother you whatever whatever so ladies and gentlemen out there watching us women on this show right here uh, <laughs> and listen okay KBV. I want to know Chris the book of Leviticus says that there is meat that is clean meat, and just say pork, for instance, because pork is one of the biggest ones, right? Okay, so the pig, the swine, that swine. Okay, so we want to talk about the baby back ribs, and I had I had somebody on my show once before, I had so much fun talking about the baby back ribs, you know, and, and the, the, you know, that fat back and them pork chops and stuff, you know. So, uh, Chris, eating the pork are you saying under your religious teaching and belief that if you eating this pork, that it can affect your spiritual walk with the Lord? Are you saying that, you know, uh, they should not eat it because the book of Leviticus says they shouldn't eat it? You know, we got a lot going on here, and I got so much going on in my mind. Boy, I tell you, my wheels get to turning, and I just get, you know, so help me out, Chris. I, I need well, some help here. In your spiritual walk, if you want to, uh, if you're close to God, and if you're listening to him, and you're doing what he tells you to do, and he has told us in his book, and he has said, I am the Lord, I change not, then you would look at his precepts. And, and in the New Testament, it says, all things are possible, all things are permissible but not all things are profitable mm -hmm. so you want to look at the law as parental not legislative it's like your dad telling you no you can't hang out until two o'clock in the morning it's okay. not good for you okay so it's not about it's not a salvific issue at all i mean i'm not going to hell because i eat pork but god is concerned about my health and he's He's like the, it's like you get a car and you read the owner's manual and you don't put Pepsi in the gas tank. 
you know? Yes. He tells you what to do to keep your body healthy. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You could even equate it to the temple where they brought in the pigs and offered them on the altar. Uh, it's, the, it's the same principle. God said he knows best. He's, God is smarter than we are. Oh, of course. He's so. the almighty creator of everything. Right. So, so you're saying... Um, uh, basically, if that person is eating pork, you know, if he's eating pig every day, you know, are, are you are you telling me that that's going to affect their spiritual walk? You know, I can't speak for anybody else. It has okay. to be revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. Okay. And God deals with each person individually, individually. But it is in the Bible, which we all go by the Bible. But, okay. you know, we try to separate into the old and the new. And that's like a modern day thing. It's not the old and new. It's the first covenant. And it's the renewed covenant. It's God is the same. He's not changing. And he did not come to die to make a pig clean. Okay, so we can't pray over it and it'd be, and it'd be okay for our body to eat. You not know, I have calling tried, anything clean and unclean. I have prayed over cake that would have no calories. And that don't work. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> These laws are set into place. The laws are the laws of, the laws of physics, the law of gravity, the law of entropy. They're all set into place. And I cannot change that. I think you're trying to make the rubber beat the road over my show right now. Talk about you playing over some cake for calories. I do, Lord. Make it, give it vitamin C. And that, that's just not going to happen. He, he's not going to make a pig clean because I pray for it. Uh-oh. I'll let you. Uh, let, let me go. Chris, I'm going to leave you alone for a minute because you're trying to start stuff over here. Let me go over here and talk to Mandy for a minute. Mandy, come on, Mandy. We got to let the folks have the pork chops and, <laughs> and the baby back ribs and things like that. You know, come on now. Clean and unclean. Nothing's called supposed to be clean, called clean and unclean. Can we just pray over it? And, and how's that going to affect our spiritual walk? It shouldn't affect our spiritual walk if, you eat, if we eat pork any time we get ready. Right? Uh, Chitlins. I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. There was a day. Oh, I'm just saying. You know? Come on with it, girl. Well, Talk to me. You know, um... Goodness, where do we start here? <laughs> start with the chitlins. <laughs> chitlins. Whew. When when I look at this, Wileyuner, I look at it like this. It is the word of God. Okay. And you know that is my, he is my father. Mm -hmm. And just like Chris said, as much as I would, I love my father on this earth. I love my dad. Okay. Whatever he needed me to do or wanted me to do, I never wanted to let him down. Uh -huh. And if his word says that, you know, he just doesn't want me to consume that, because my dad would have said, don't drive drunk, then I'm going to say, you know, Father, if you say there's something wrong with it, I'm okay with that. It's not hindering me any. I have other things that he's given me on this earth that I can eat that I find just as tasteful and wonderful. So for me... Personally, it's the word of God. I know? can't just pray over it. And, uh, because what about the book of uh, 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 Acts? What about the book of Acts? Everybody misinterprets that. And How? It's interesting because that all had to do with the Jews and the Gentiles and what was going on at that time. And, and the Jews were so prejudiced at that time. And the vision that against the Gentiles, and not in a negative way, you guys, <laughs> but that was just what was going on at that time. They really felt like, you know, the Lord wanted them to share the word with everyone, the gospel with everyone. And at that time... That sounded like racism. No. Well, at, back then, you know, you're in a different culture. That was culture. racism, wasn't it? was it? a different culture. Mm -hmm. And so okay. that vision was to let um, Peter know it's okay to go to this gentleman's house and give him a teaching and that gentleman had a vision himself that was welcoming Peter to come forth and they spoke and they spoke about God and they reveled in that and their families reveled in that and so people misinterpret that because they don't read the whole chapter you know, okay but what about word for word come on now I'm sorry don't well, call any any anything clean and unclean rise Peter slay and eat may I may I interject I don't know if I want to let you okay. interject or not. You just wait a minute, Chris. I mean, see, I told y'all. Y'all know when women get together, it's something that's a force to be reckoned with. But you wait a minute, Chris. I'm going to give you a second in just a minute. But I just want you to tell me. Oh, uh, Mandy, rise, Peter, slay, and eat. Don't that sound like food? 
those were the things that Lord didn't want him to partake in. But I mean, don't that sound like him saying, eat, eat what you want to eat? No. No. Okay, Mandy, you just not working with Sorry. me. I'm gonna go over here to Chris. Chris. Chris, come on, talk to me, Chris. You what? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Why is Peter Slay and eat? Yes. Can we eat the pig? Can we eat the pork chops? Uh, you know. No, because that. if you read further, don't just do that soundbite. Read further. Peter wondered, what does this vision mean? Vision. Now, it was a yes, vision. It was a oh. vision. It was a talit, actually, a prayer shawl come down with all these food. Now, did he get up and eat that stuff? Did he run and eat a pork sandwich? No. He ran to a unclean Gentile, yes. and they matched their visions up. Amen. If oh. it was about food, he would have gone and had a ham sandwich. He would have gone to Red Lobster. No, come on now. There wasn't no red lobster. Don't even go there. Wasn't no red lobster. But okay, he would have. He went, went and got him a. Uh, he would have went and carved him a, a, a hunk of pig leg or something. A McRib. Right? A, 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 a foot. Yeah. <laughs> a pig but leg. he didn't. And he even says, okay. "I wonder what this what this means. is all about." Because yeah. okay. I know what you the Lord have, has told me. You exactly. have to read the rest of this. Okay. So now the two of you are different denominations and different beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. Messianic Judaism mm -hmm. and Seventh Day Adventism. Okay. But you, but you tend to be on the same page when it comes to this uh, this this uh, 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 pork thing or this <laughs> and uh, on the Sabbath, unclean. And on the Sabbath. Amen. Oh, y'all keep the same day worship. Seven okay. Day. Yes. Seven yes. Day. Yes. Seven day. Seven day Sabbath keepers. Okay. All right. Well, we're not here to talk about what day you worship today. Okay. We're talking about health and food and eating and drinking and things like that. So you're saying that uh, you know we we got we got I guess we got that out there anyway we put it out there mm -hmm. how you feel about those scriptures the leviticus scripture and the acts scripture and and how they don't mean what people tend to think that they mean that's what i'm getting from the two of you am i right that's sad too yeah okay okay so all right well meat or vegetarian i mean we're talking about health here mm -hmm. We're talking about health here. So, meat or vegetarian? Uh, if you're going to be healthy, you know, in, in your spiritual walk, is it is it okay to, Chris, uh, eat meat? Or should you be a vegetarian? I absolutely think that is a personal preference. You need protein, whether it's plant protein or meat protein. The problem I have is with today's food being so injected with chemicals yes. and antibiotics, and we're not letting the land rest so that the ground can remineralize, so we're growing food with no minerals. The food, it, right now, it doesn't matter if you eat meat or vegetables because they're not how God designed them to be. They're full of pesticides and antibiotics hormones yeah hormones oh yeah. my gosh so right now don't eat anything <laughs> okay bad. well wait a minute now. come on <laughs> Sorry. i hit that on my notes somewhere about fasting oh. <laughs> I okay. Did not read your so, notes ahead of time. Yeah, because I think you've been in my in my <laughs> notes here. <laughs> fasting is it good or is it bad? That's what I was going to ask y'all. Like you're supposed to fast, but wait a minute. I don't want to go to fast yet. Okay. I want to. I want. I want. I want uh, Mandy to answer my question as well about. So 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 Chris, you said you you're saying that it's okay to eat meat, but in this particular day and age is what you, is what I'm getting from you yes. is that because of all the stuff that's going on in the world and with the animals yeah. it's really not a good idea but then of course I think you're saying the vegetables are not safe either right no but okay. so what you need to do is find a grass fed beef um, cage free chicken okay organic vegetables grow them yourself get in the soil find out what a seed does in the ground be patient and nurture well, that what if you live in an apartment you can't grow no garden in an apartment complex I sure couldn't grow can. anything on a farm I Come got on, black man. thumbs okay yeah me too me too everything I grow it just die immediately my husband <laughs> only thing still alive with me right now <laughs> I and I didn't grow him as mama did, so there you have it. You know? Okay, 
and Mandy. Come on, talk yes. to me, Mandy, about the meat and the vegetables. Do we need to? Do we need to be a vegetarian? Or can? Because I'm trying to let the people know my listening viewing audience and listening audience. Do we need to be vegetarians to be healthy to have a good spiritual walk? Or can we eat a little meat? Okay, we didn't already determine that the meat is there's some unclean meat. So forget about the unclean meat. What about the clean meat? Can we eat the clean meat and eat the vegetables and be healthy? Talk to me. Well, when we look at Exodus 15:26, that was when Israel was brought out of Egypt. And the Lord had blessed them and said to them, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I put upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Um, basically, the health laws kind of, they were very obedient. You know, they, God only wants our obedience. And so with meat, like Chris said, now it's completely polluted. I've got statistics on, I'm a science type of person. Mm -hmm. We had almost 50,000, 890,000 pounds of recall beef last year, mm -hmm. all from E. coli, fecal matter in the meat. Um, it, it's, I don't feel, we're vegetarian. We have more than enough protein out of all the food that we eat as a family, and that's, and we train hard. We work out. I work with uh, children. We've, I've worked with several children in the city, um, collegiate athletes. Um, we've, I've never had a problem with a, a vegetarian diet. Okay. So so you're saying, in, in your belief and in your teaching, mm -hmm. you're saying that vegetarian diet is better than eating meat. You, you're, you're saying that it, you should really be a vegetarian. In my heart, truly, if it was up to me, I would love. So what about the person... Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. what about the person that's eating the clean meat? They're not eating the the unclean, the pig, the pork chops, and the chitlins. Right. They eating absolutely no. You're <laughs> they right. eating the chicken and the and the and the and the, and the f fish and you're the beef or whatever you know. Right. What I'm looking at with that is again, I'll I'll look at some of the, the things that Ellen G. White had written, and it's in the diets and foods where she said eventually. Even those things will not be clean any longer. Okay, but what about the vegetables? The vegetables the, are not clean either, right? They're, they're not as clean, but at least we can absorb those vitamins and minerals that are in the vegetables. See, the, the, the meat has so much fat and blood in it and everything else. Well, that, th don't you cook it till the blood is gone? It's a special process to get the blood out of the meat from what I've heard. I, you know, And you can't just cook a steak with blood in it and say there's no blood in it. It's still full of blood. Oh. You know. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm getting kind of okay. sick right Sorry. here. So. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You know, just Let's trying move to break on. it down for the folks out there on a health note. We're Let's just trying to talk on. about the health of our people in the world. The That's it. in the road on me right now. It's meaning it on me. You know, so I need y'all to leave me alone for a second. Let me move on. All right. <laughs> Well, what about uh, dairy? You know, I know uh, dairy. Don't we need uh, calcium? Oh, and Because we have to have calcium and vitamin D and, and, and that type of thing. So Absolutely. what about the dairy? Can't we drink some milk? Well, and and, and uh, 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 I'm I'm gonna go to Chris. Can we drink some milk and 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 uh, eat some cottage cheese and you know and eat some cheese and you know things like that? Uh, uh, it, how is that gonna affect you know our, our can we do it and how is it gonna affect our spiritual walk? Well, yeah, we can do it. Um, I think the goal is to be healthy, to um, have a clear mind, and be able to communicate with our God. Um, uh, but the cow does not make calcium. The cow gets the calcium from the greens that he eats. Absolutely. So we oh. just bypass the cow, his milk, and humans are the only ones that continue to drink milk after Thank you. The, uh, the age of whatever weaning is. Right. You know, um, animals continue to drink milk, and then, but, but yeah, we're not supposed to. Right. So we right. don't need that. Um, so uh, that's so not. Uh, uh, somebody told me. I heard somebody say that's not our milk anyway. Right. There you go. There you go. That's cow okay. milk. That's not mother's okay. milk. Okay. 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 But again, it's packed with antibiotics plus uh, bovine yes. growth hormone. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> It's bad out there. out there. It's bad out there. What are we going to do, y'all? Well, I tell you what we're going to do. I'm well in Las Vegas, Queen of God, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, the rubber is going to meet the road. We'll see you in a minute. Sugar. 
You know how bad it is. You've read all about it. It's linked to everything from weight gain to chronic inflammation to being the best Petri dish for all bacteria and viruses to grow. It feeds all the bad stuff so they get stronger and destroys all the good things making you weak and defenseless. You need to control it or you'll be facing one or more of the health concerns it breeds. Although we all should be watching our consumption, there are some of us that are particularly sensitive to the effects of sugar. After eating any type of meal, do remember, the body breaks down everything from that healthy broccoli to the not so healthy but tasty donut into sugar called glucose. However, some of us have a very efficient way of getting rid of this sugar while others don't. And as I said before, when sugar hangs around longer than it should, it causes the destruction of tissues and organs and cells, which then becomes a major health issue. The Healthy Body Blood Sugar Pack is specifically designed for those individuals who need further support to buffer these sugar levels in their body after mealtimes and keeps them from spiking and crashing all the time and also helps to support those systems and organs that help the self-regulation of these sugar levels. The Blood Sugar Pack is grounded in the three products in our Healthy Body Pack, so all those are in there, but then it further specializes by adding sweeties a proprietary blend of natural nutrients that support the moving of sugar or glucose into cells so they can be burned for energy. They also help to support healthy insulin levels and support the buffering of sugar levels after meals. The blood sugar pack gives you the controls you need to support healthy blood sugar management. Hi, this is Wileen of the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution. $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more. Whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R. To 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay, we're back. We're back. And, uh, yeah, y'all, this is where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> Okay, listen, ladies, one minute. Vitamins and minerals, do we need them, Mandy? Absolutely, we need them. Okay. We're not getting it out of our food any longer. And even with supplements, there's so many wonderful things out there that God's blessed us with. If we were only to research and utilize it, we can bring back his temple to a peak of health. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Chris? Um, Vitamins and minerals, supplements, do we need them? Well, there are two kinds of vitamins and supplements. So you have these chemical copies, right. which the body, I don't know what the body does, with, but it doesn't. We want to use a food-based or a plant-based vitamin and mineral. Those are good supplements. Yes. Those, are, but they tend to be very expensive and mm-hmm. kind of, especially in this day and age when oh, nobody has any money, you're on a fixed income, you've got four kids, you can't afford organic food, food-based supplements. Uh, chemical free shampoo uh, you know you're buying whatever's cheap in massive amounts because you got a big family to take care of drinking coffee and juice Mandy drinking coffee and juice uh, juice moderation coffee no go uh, Chris coffee and juice Still, I, you know juice high fructose yeah. uh, you know if it's real juice eat the real That's fruit right. coffee yes <laughs> Amen. I you like know, that. Yes, coffee, absolutely. Cancer, cancer thrives in an acidic environment. A lot of coffee creates an acidic. I love okay. my coffee. Okay. Well, listen, ladies. We're going to come back next week, okay? And when we come back next week, we're going to talk. We're going to uh, touch on. We're going to recap on what we talked about today. And then we're going to talk a little bit about exercise. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, uh uh, I'm going to introduce some information to you ladies and to my listeners and viewers, uh, uh, some supplement information, okay? And so uh, we're going to talk about uh, 
uh, whether if you're disabled, can you exercise? You know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more next week, okay? And I just want to say to the ladies, I've enjoyed having you today. Thank you, Thank you so for much me. for coming. Y'all are the bomb. I enjoyed y'all. You have any last words before we go? Just Quick. God bless everybody. Okay. All right. Come back next week. <laughs> ah, that's Chris. Now why you steal my line? <laughs> no, oh. I want to do it up. See, that's what I tell y'all when I get these women in this room. It's just something else is a force to be reckoned with. Well, I tell you what, y'all. You know what I tell you every week she didn't get this line. I tell you every week to study for yourself. Study for yourself. Y'all know there's so many different teachers and beliefs out there. You will be confused. Yes. So you have got to study for yourself. You owe it to you to study for yourself, okay? Get in them books. Get in them encyclopedias. Do what you got to do. Get on the internet. Y'all know we got it now. So study for yourself. This is the place to be, to come to the Wild Eater Show and learn some things, but you got to study for yourself. Don't wait for the person up front to tell you everything you need to know. Get in the book and study for yourself. Y'all know who I am. I'm Wild Eater, the Las Vegas queen of gospel, and I'm excited to be with you today, and I'll be back again next week with these two beautiful ladies, and we're going to talk about no health, no religion. This is the show, and this is where the rubber meets the road. We'll see you next week.